Okay. All right. All right. Uh, let's get started. Uh, so welcome. We are in lecture 24, and if my math serves me correctly, we, we are over halfway through the class. Can you believe that? We're over halfway through. That's crazy. Okay. Um, uh, a couple uh, announcements. I checked last night. I think homeworks 5.5 and 5.6 are still being graded, but the solutions for those homeworks should be posted as of this morning, at least. 5.5 was already up. 5.6 should turn active today. Um, submittal 1, I'm still working on that. Uh, my goal is to get that to you by either Friday or Monday, uh, because on Monday, I'm going to give you the requirements for submittal 2. Okay. Now, um, the way submittal 2 is going to work, um, you're going to have to submit three things for submittal two. So the first thing you're going to have to submit is all the calculations. Um, and we'll talk about that uh, as we get closer to the project. Because, you you know, uh, uh, the 32nd version is you can do all those calcs in Excel. And you kind of should because it will make your life a lot easier. Um, the second thing you're going to submit is a mass hand file. We haven't covered mass hand uh, yet, but we will. Mass hand is how you're actually going to perform the analysis. Um, and then you're also going to submit a CAD drawing. Um, now, the, in the calculations, you do a, a little paragraph reflection, so it's not really a, a big deal. But the overall point is it's going to take a while to, to go through all that. So submittal two is going to be due the Friday before Thanksgiving break. Uh, but I want to get submittal one graded by early next week so that I can give you submittal two. Um, how did the frame homework go? Uh, hopefully that was easy. Good. Okay. Um, I'm going to give you 6.1 today, to uh, do Wednesday. 6.1 is our first homework on beam deflection. Uh, so let's go ahead and get right into it. Let's talk about beam deflection. Uh, if I could pull, find those slides. Okay. All right. So let's talk about beam deflection. Um, let's just recap where we left off. I know that last time was a little theory heavy. I understand that. And uh, so today uh, and for the next couple of days, we're going to digest what we talked about in our um, last lecture and we're going to start using it. I think you'll find that if, if the last lecture was, you know, a little heavy on the math and the theory that once we start applying it, it's not so bad. So um, whenever we're computing the deflection of a beam, so that's our target goal in this module. We're trying to uh, take uh, flexural structures and elements and compute their deformations. So like with trusses, we needed two sets of results. We needed real results and we needed virtual results. Well, same thing is true with uh, a flexural response. We need real moment functions, though, and virtual moment functions. Okay? So um, we, we take our... Uh, uh, big M's as our functions from the real loads, the original loads that are on the structure, and then the virtual moment functions come from kicking all those loads off and placing a single unit load uh, at the point of interest with a magnitude of one in the assumed direction of deflection. If we're doing deflections, like displacements, we do a unit force. If we're doing rotations or slopes, we do a unit moment. Um, and so don't forget we have our Young's modulus, we have our moment of inertia. Uh, and so because our moments are going to be variable, as opposed to in trusses where the forces were constant, the moments are going to be variable, we're going to have to integrate. We're going to have to sum those integrals up. Okay? Um, the other thing worth mentioning is that when you look at your units, they're going to be off. So we have unit conversion factors for both deflections uh, and uh, um, rotations. For rotations, the conversion factor is 144 and then a 180 over pi to get the answer in degrees. And then for um, deflections, it's 1728. So this is 12 squared, this is 12 cubed. Um, now, what's going to get challenging with um, beams is that uh, we're going to have situations where we only have one integral to evaluate, and then we're going to have situations where we have multiple integrals to evaluate. And the reason is because we might have situations where we have multiple moment functions. Okay? And to, to kind of explain what's going on there, um, let's Let's talk about the, just that aspect of it, the number of moment functions. It, I, I've learned that it, if you can wrap your head around this part and deriving these moment functions, the computation of deflections is really, really, really easy. This is the hard part. Okay? So um, whenever we're trying to define a moment diagram or define moment functions, um, the need, what happens is the need for multiple functions is caused by what I'll call load interruptions. So things like the uh, presence of a concentrated force, a concentrated moment, a concentrated reaction, um, any distributed load that 
changes or terminates or, or commences, this is when uh, you, you need a different moment function. And an easy way of figuring this out, though, is to imagine your samurai sword or lightsaber, imagine that cut is moving along the beam. And whenever you see something new, that tells you there is a need for a new moment function. Okay? So let's take, for example, this uh, uh, structure here. So I have an overhanging beam. I have a, distribu a uniformly distributed load between B and C, but uh, to the left of B and to the right of C, I have a triangular load. Okay? So one of the questions I'll ask is how many different moment functions am I going to need to fully define this moment diagram? Okay? And an easy way of figuring that out is just imagine that you're cutting sections and imagine you're taking the section cut and moving it along the structure. And so the way I kind of like to do that is imagine, so if you remember, when you cut a section, you cut a section, you either look to the left or to the, or to the right. Let's just assume we're looking to the left. So let's imagine I cut a section and I look to the left. If I cut a section right here, all I see is a triangular load. Y'all see that? Okay. What about right here? What do I see? I see a triangular load. What about right here? What do I see? A triangular load. Well, what happens if I get over here? Now it's different, right? Now I see a triangular load, but now I see this reaction, and I see this uniformly distributed load. Okay, so I propose I can define the moments with a single function from here to here, but once I get past B, I'm going to need another M of X. I'm going to need another moment function. Okay, so this is function one. Now we're in function two land, and see again, look right here. What do I got? Triangular reaction uniformly distributed. What about right here? Triangular reaction uniformly distributed. I can use the same moment function all the way here. And then once I get past C, it changes again, right? Okay, so the question would be, how many different moment functions would I need for this beam to fully define the moment diagram? And the answer is three, okay? Does, everybody, does that make sense? Because as I cut the section and I move across, I get load interruptions here and here. So for the purposes of writing equations, what that means is I'm gonna have to do three different section cuts. Now, what I'll... Um, what I'll, I'll get at is, so today what we're going to do is we're going to do problems that only require, sorry, I'll, I'll get to that here in a sec. So today what we're going to do is only focus on problems that only require a single moment function, okay? Just to get our hands around the situation. And then we'll focus on multiple moment functions. And then before you do the multiple moment homework, which is probably one of the bigger homeworks in the class, I'll go through some tips and tricks that I have to make a process like this a lot easier because there are some tricks that you can use to make the analysis of a problem like this a, a lot easier to do. So I just want to make sure that at least right now you can recognize that this structure would require three moment functions to fully de define the moment diagram. Everybody with me on that? Okay, now I want to <coughs> just make a point about something because unfortunately we're not going to need just moment functions for the real loads but we're going to need moment functions for the virtual loads as well, okay? So I want to just take a step back, and I want to recall the shear and moment diagrams for concentrated force effects, okay? So I've got here a beam with a single point load and a beam with a single point moment, a single concentrated moment, okay? Now, would you agree that if I look at the shear diagram and the moment diagram for the concentrated force, it looks something like this, and what I'm really focusing on are the moment diagrams, that the moment diagrams for beams like this are going to consist of piecewise linear functions, right? That's essentially what the moment diagram looks like. It's just a bunch of straight lines. Everybody with me so far? Okay, what about the concentrated moment? If I draw the shear and moment diagram for it, remember there's no real effect on the shear diagram, but the moment diagram is a series of constant moments. So far, so good? All right. Anybody, I, I want you to now, I want you to focus on the moment diagrams. Anybody seeing anything that's common between this and this? Well, would, let, me ask you, let me ask you this way. Do you think that we're ever going to get a situation that has any parabolas? Any parabolas or um, curved sections if all we're dealing with is point loads and point moments? Is that ever going to happen? No, it's not, right? Okay. The reason why I'm, I'm bringing this up is, remember, we have to do a real analysis and we have to do a virtual analysis. 
What is the virtual analysis? We kick all the loads off and we place only a single point load or only a single point moment. So what I'm getting at is that for virtual structures, the moment diagrams should always be straight lines. They should always be linear, okay? So what that means is that there's a couple of different ways that we can use to derive an, a, a, a virtual moment function. The first is cutting sections, which it can be tedious if you've got a lot of them that you need to derive, but the other is just using some basic geometry. You know, if I have the points, right, if I have the x comma y's, I can determine the slope of these functions, but I don't even really need to do that because what is the slope of a moment function? It's just the shear, right? So I can just find the shear and I can use y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1 point slope formula and find the moment function really, really fast, okay? Now that only works for, you know, that only works for virtual structures and any real structures that only have uh, point loads on them, <coughs> but it is a, a tool that we can use to make our life a, a, a lot easier. And I just throw that out there because we are going to have some problems where we're going to be able to, uh, to use this. So the idea is if we graphically construct our shear and moment diagrams, or our, specifically our virtual shear and moment diagrams, we can quickly derive these functions pretty easily, okay? I just throw that out there so that you have it, okay? Um, and again, that all, again, as I said, that also tr holds true for any time there's a linear uh, uh, function for the real structure uh, as well. That's not going to work for our problem today, but I just throw that out there because I'm going to throw you some tips and tricks that hopefully is going to make your life a, a lot easier, okay? Make sense? All right, I think the best way of, of wrapping our hands around this is to actually do a problem, okay? So let's, let's take a look at this, okay? So I have a beam, okay, and I want to determine the vertical displacement and the rotation at point A using the method of virtual work. So, for example, I have a beam. That beam is fixed here at B, and I'm applying a load. So I'm proposing that point A is going to deflect some downward, something like this, and I want to know how much it displaces, how much it deflects downward, and how much that point rotates. Okay. So I have a cantilevered beam. It's 15 foot long, and it's subjected to two and a half kips per foot. Okay. So I'm just to have a couple things in the back of our heads. Let's make sure that we recognize that what we're doing. is we're going to be integrating, and I'll just say 0 to L, M, M over EI, okay? And um, to be clear, you know, specifically the, the definition says that what we're supposed to do is sum all these integrals up. But for this problem, we're only going to need a single function to fully define both moment diagrams. So we're really only going to have one integral that we need to evaluate. So it's going to be pretty easy for us. Okay. So let's, let's take it one step at a time. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I want to look at the real structure. Okay. Um, and so the real structure being the structure that we're seeing right here on the screen. This is the simply, or the cantilevered beam with a um, uniformly distributed load on it. Okay, now um, let's see if you all can do this relatively quickly. Okay, um, so so the real structure, and so we're going to derive that. Okay. Okay, so here's our structure. It's 15 feet long. Can somebody tell me what the reactions are at B, just off the top of your head? So what's the vertical reaction here going to be? 37.5. 37 37.5 kips. So this right here is 37.5 kips. Is everybody with me on that? Because 
Two and a half times 15 is 37 down, so I've got to have 37 up. And what about the moment reaction? Is anybody able to do that one? 281.25. Do I have a second? Okay, all right, good. All right, so if I were to draw the shear diagram and the moment diagram, let, let's just sort of chug that out. Okay, so the shear diagram is going to start at zero. It's going to traverse downward to 37.5 negative, and it's going to hop back up to zero. Okay, the slope of that line is going to be negative 2.5, right? The area is going to be negative 281.25 and then our moment diagram is going to start at zero and then somebody help me out. Somebody else. Is it going to be pattern one or pattern two? Is it going to go? Yeah, it's going to start at a little and then go down like that, right? That's what it should look like. Is everybody with me on that? Okay. So, okay. Okay just to make sure that we're sort of like on the same page with this, okay? Now, let's see. Now we need to define moment functions. Now, I sort of left something off here that I kind of want to talk about, and I left it off on purpose. Um, does anybody see something that's missing from here? And I'll scroll up here to kind of show you. Anybody see that something I didn't draw? Like what's in this picture up above that I didn't draw down here? The coordinate system, right? I didn't draw the axes, right? I didn't draw the coordinate system, okay? I want to talk a little bit about that. So for this first problem and this first homework assignment, I'm going to give you the coordinate system. But it's not like you're going to be given that as an analyst. So later on, we're going to discuss how to choose coordinate systems and what's the easiest way of going about it. And so don't worry, we are going to cover that. Um, but for now, I'm just going to sort of make an assumption that my coordinate system kind of starts here, okay? And what I'm going to do is now I'm going to try and define a moment function that, that represents this loading. Now, does everybody agree that I only need one moment function to fully define this moment diagram? I mean, if I cut a section... At some random point, and look to the left, what do I see? A beam and a distributed load. What about if I cut a section right here? What do I see? Beam and a distributed load. Whatever that function is, it'll work for the entirety of the beam, right? Because once I get here, yeah, I see loads with the beam. I'm done with the beam, right? So I really only need one moment function to fully define this moment diagram. So let's figure that out, okay? Let's cut a section, okay? So I'm going to cut a section and we're going to cut a section some distance x. This is some distance x away from the left end of the beam. Okay. So let's do section 1-1 one, one. and which direction do you want to look? Do you want to look left or to the right? I don't know about you, but looking left would be a lot easier. There's a lot less stuff on the left than there is on the right. So what happens if I look left? What do I get? I get a beam. I get a distributed load. Here's my section cut. This distance is X. This is 2.5 kips per foot. And then remember, I have a shear and a moment. Which direction is positive shear? 
make sure we're all paying attention. What's that? Oh. Hold on, we're cutting a section looking to the left. When we cut a section and look to the left, we take downward shears to be positive. Y'all remember that? Remember when we cut a section? We cut a section. This is positive. That's positive. You remember that? We covered it. I know we did. Because we did it when we derived our moment, our shear and moment functions. What's positive moment on this, this section here going to be? So when I draw a positive moment, is it going to be rotating counterclockwise or clockwise? Counterclockwise. Counterclockwise moments are positive. Okay. Okay. Now, before I start calculating things, what I'm going to do is I'm going to collapse this into a single point load, this distributed load. What is the magnitude of that point load going to be? 2.5x, because that's the length of this segment. All right. Now, how far is that from here? Now, hold, hold on. All right, some, it's x over 2. This is x. This is a rectangle. That's half that. This is x over 2. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is some moments at the cut. I'm going to sum moments at the cut. All right. Do I have to consider the shear if I'm summing moments right here? No. So I've got M this way. And I've got, what do I got? I got 2.5x times x over 2. Is that right? So 1. Wait. Oh, no, no, no. I, I got that wrong. Hold on. Both of these are on this side. Right? Because cutting the section, they're both rotating this way. So I've got 0 equals m plus, what is that, 1.25x squared. Did I do that right? And that is going to be, therefore, negative 1.25x squared. Okay? So I'm going to write that up here on the board just so I don't have to keep scrolling. So I've got m of x is negative 1.25x squared. Okay? Now I'm going to put something else next to this. I haven't done this yet in this class. I'm going to do this. I'm going to put a little thing over here, and I'm going to say 0 to 15. Now, the reason I'm doing that is because the beam is 15 foot long, and I propose that the limits for this function are from x equals 0 to x equals 15. That's pretty obvious for this problem, but for later problems, that's probably not going to be. Okay? Now, does this function work? Well, let's see. Let's just make sure. Let's just make sure we're getting something that makes sense. So how um, how long is the beam again? 15? And our function was uh, um, 1.25, negative 1.25 times that squared. All right. So... You can just go with that. Just to highlight what's going on here. So does that shape look right? I mean, that's what we got here, right? I mean, we were getting a shape that looked kind of like that, and that's what we're getting. And what's our value right here? Negative 281.25. Is that what we're getting here? I don't know. It looks right to me, negative 281.25. So we can easily test whether or not these functions work just by plotting them in Excel. So far, so good? 
Now this is fine, but I also need a virtual function. Okay. Now for this problem, just to be clear, the problem asked us to find two deflections. Okay. The problem said, tell me what is the vertical displacement at point A and what is the, uh, the rotation at A. So we're going to have two of these. So we'll call this maybe an MAY and an MA theta. I don't know. It doesn't matter. So we've got two of these. We have two of these that we're going to need to determine. Okay. So let's go through how we figure that out. Okay. Let's start off with the deflection, the deferent or the displacement. Okay. So let me do this. I'm breaking my rule a little bit today by doing a lot of scrolling. I'm trying to avoid that. Okay. So in order to determine this, we're going to need the virtual structure for the displacement at A. Okay. Um, and so what does that structure look like? So I've got a beam. There's a distributed load. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to kick all of the original loads off the structure and I'm going to replace it with a single load right here, a 1.0 load. Now let me ask you a question. Do you think I should place that load downward or upward? I say down as well because I think that the structure is going to deflect downwards. Okay, so I'm going to place a downward load right here. Okay, so this is 15 feet. Let's do the same thing we did before. What's our vertical reaction going to be? One. What about our moment reaction? 15. Exactly right. So we have a... 1.0 reaction right here. And if we want to get uh, technical, oops, sorry, I did that backwards. Uh, if we want to get technical on our moment reaction, the units are 15 feet, all right? Because, you know, it was 15 foot kip up here because the load was in kips. Here the load is unitless. So if you want to get technical, that should be feet. Um, but as long as you're maintaining a consistent unit system, that shouldn't be a, a big deal. So our shear diagram, I'll draw that with a little v. And that doesn't have any units, so I'll leave that off. Starts off at 0, goes down to minus 1 over, and then goes back up. Right? OK. What about the virtual moment function? What's the area under the shear diagram? What is that, minus 15? So I start at 0. Go to minus 15. Go back up to 0. Did I, did I do that too fast, or are you all kind of with me on that? Now, walk me through this one, one last question. What is the slope of that line? What's the slope of this line? <coughs> nope. Negative one. The slope of this line is equal to the shear. The shear is negative one. The slope of that line is negative one. Does that make sense? Everybody with me on that? Now, let me show you what I was talking about earlier. Okay, so okay, let's cut a section. Remember, we've got our y axis, x axis. So we'll cut a section again. All right, so. Z 
draw our shear, draw our moment. If I sum moments at the cut, so what do I have? I've got one times what? X, and then I have M. So I have Sorry, oh, that's I put negative. That's not negative. That's that's just one because the moment I've got the moment in the proper sign convention. So zero equals m plus x, and so therefore m is minus x. And again, from zero to fifteen. So this value right here, this deflection, is going to be minus x. Make sense? Now that is one way of finding that equation. Here's another way. Let's use geometry. Okay. We're tr See, I want to make sure everybody's clear. This right here is just the equation of that line. Okay. What is the slope of this line? Minus one, right? So the slope is minus one. What's the y-intercept of this line? Zero, right? Did everybody see that? So do y'all remember this whole y equals mx plus b? How about How about just that? This is what I was meaning earlier, that virtual structures are always just going to be straight line segments. So if we know the slope and we know the y-intercept, there you go. You know, So we can do that instead of having to do all this. Okay, so It's just something to keep in mind. Sound good? Okay, so, so now we've got a real moment function and we have a virtual moment function the next part is really easy so let's let's walk through that okay so we're going to do the method of virtual work and this is for displacement uh, a hold on vertical. Okay. So we have a real moment function of minus 1.25 x squared and a virtual moment function of minus x. So can somebody help me out? What is, um, if I multiply those two, what do I get? I get positive 1.25x to the third, okay? Now what was E again and what was I? Anybody remember what those were? E was 20,000. What was I? All right, so let, let's account for that. Let's put this as inches to the fourth. Let's put this as KSI. And then I'll move these over a little bit. You all don't need to worry about this too much, but this is in foot kips. And if we want to get technical, this is in feet. Okay, so therefore, Okay, so if we're trying to find the deflection at A, we're going to integrate from 0 to L. So we want to fully sum up the energy across the entire structure. Little m, big M over EI. Okay, so let, let's check all this out. 
So we're going to integrate from x equals 0 to x equals 15 of, so on the bottom we're going to have 20,000 times 1,500, and then on the top we're going to have 1.25x to the third dx. Okay, does anybody see a problem? What am I missing? What's the problem here? The units aren't going to work out. So what am I going to need to do? I'm going to need to take this entire integral and multiply it by what? What was our deflection conversion factor? 1728. Okay. Okay. So far so good? So now what I'm going to do is I seem to remember from calculus one that if I have the integral of a constant times a function, I can pull all those constants out, right? Y'all remember that? So what I could do is I can say, all right, so let's let's pull all these constants out. So I've got a 20,000 times 1,500, and then on the top, 1 1.25 times 1728. Um, and that's just going to leave me with this. Now, I don't know about you, but that's a pretty easy integral to solve, right? The integral from 0 to 15 of x cubed dx. Now, there's a couple ways we can go about it. Um, first thing we can do is we can break out our Casio FX115 ES plus or similar scientific calculator. And boom, pretty easy, right? All right, that's a pretty easy one, right? So 12, 656.25. So what I can do is I can just put myself a little note here that says this is 12, 656.25. Or, you know, if you want, you calculus purists out there, those that love integrals can say that the integral from zero to 15 of x to the third is the integral of x to the fourth over four from zero to 15. So that's going to be one fourth, 15 to the fourth minus zero to the fourth, four. However you want to do it, doesn't matter, right? So now, we have a nice expression to solve. 1 1.25, 17.28, 12, 656.25, 20,000, 1,500. So what is our deflection at A? So when I chug this out, what do we get? And we'll say three decimal places because that's enough. Anybody got an answer for me on that? Zero point nine one one. Do I have a second on that? Now, did that come out positive or negative? Positive. Okay. So therefore, our deflection at A. What does that mean? <coughs> a positive deflection means that our initial assumption of it deflecting downward was correct. So zero point nine one one. And then the answer is going to be in inches because that's what this does for us, right? This tells us we want an answer in inches 
and that is deflecting downward. And that's our answer. Make sense? It's pretty easy, right? It's, I, I told you, so yes, there's calculus, but when you actually boil it down, it's, it's really easy. Like it's, it's not difficult integration. And again, most of it you can just do with the calculator. All right, sound good? Let's do our rotation. Let's do our rotation, okay? So in order to do the rotation, okay, so let's go through the process, okay? So if I want to compute the rotation at A, I'm going to integrate from 0 to 15, you know, EI, I'm going to have a rotation function times the real function, and then I'm going to multiply the whole thing by what? One forty four times one a over pi, because I want the answer in degrees. So what am I missing? I'm missing this function, right? I've got everything else, right? I already have my real function. I don't have that. I've got e, I've got i, I've got all that. So I need to figure out this virtual moment function. So I need to do a virtual analysis. To figure out that moment for the rotation today. So what is that going to look like? It's going to look like this. All right. Um, and what I'm going to do, I'll walk you through this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place a unit moment. And I'm going to place the unit moment like this. Okay. The reason why I'm doing that this way is because, so if I look at the original structure, so here's the original structure, and I've got this distributed load on it. Okay, I propose that the deflected shape is going to look something like that. Would you agree with that? Okay, so that means that at this point right here, the slope looks like this, right? So the slope used to look like that. Now it looks like this. So it's rotating that way. D does that make sense? That's why, I'm, uh, that's why I'm placing my moment this way, because that's the way that that structure is going to change rotation. Is, it, is, that, is that clear? Okay. So... Let me ask you a question. Have I actually used these support reactions when I cut the section? Because I've always cut the section and looked this way. So why don't I just dispense with computing the support reactions? I will cut my section some distance x away. So section 1-1 looking left so here's my structure so if I sum moments at the cut So M1, so I usually write my 1s as 1.0s just to make sure that we're clear we're talking about 1s so if you're wondering why I do that. So 0 equals M plus 1, so therefore M is minus 1. Make sense? So this is from 0 to 15 as well. So here's our function. There we go. And now we just do this. We just do this. 
So let's chug it out. We said we got five minutes. We can chug this out. So So method of virtual work for the rotation at A. So the rotation at A is going to equal the integral from 0 to 15 of, well here, let's, let's be formal about it. 0 to L of mm over ei dx. So the integral from x equals 0 to x equals 15 of uh, negative 1 times the real moment function again dx and then multiplying the whole thing times 144 times 180 over pi Let's pull all the constants out. So we're going to have a 144, a 180. Uh, inside that integral, that's going to be a positive 1.25, 20,000, 1,500. And then that's going to leave an integral from 0 to 15 of x squared dx. Now that's pretty easy to calculate, right? That's a lot easier than some of the stuff you did in Calc 1 and Calc 2. So, so when we chug that out, I'll go ahead and give you that one. That one ends up being 112.5 because it's just x cubed over 3 from, 15, from 0 to 15. So it's just 15 cubed over 3. Um, so, whatever, you know, it's pretty easy. Um, okay. Or sorry, not, not, I'm sorry. It's not 112.5, it's 1125, right? Because it's 15 cubed over 3, yeah. Okay. Sorry, I wrote that really tiny on my calcs. So this is going to be just one big old fraction, 144, 180, 1.25, 1125, 20,000, Oh, I forgot my pie. Nobody said anything. All right. So when I chug this out, what do I get? Zero point three eight seven. Do I have a second on that? Second. And what are the units for that going to be? Degrees. So therefore theta is positive, or, well I say it's positive up here, but really what I care about is the orientation, and the orientation is 0 0.387 degrees, and it is rotated that way. Alright, what do you think? It's pretty, hopefully it's pretty easy. Any questions? All right, I'm going to give you a homework assignment today that's due Wednesday, but the one I give you Wednesday is going to be due on Monday. It's not due on Friday because it's a long homework. And so on Friday, I'm going to give you Dr. Mike's tips and tricks to make that homework go a little faster. But not just the homework, I mean virtual work in general. You'll see what I mean. So with that, that's all I got. I will see you all on Wednesday.